Good morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Warner Temple, A.M.B. Zion Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. What a beautiful day. Carolina blue skies, nice cool breeze. More importantly, God has allowed us to see it, allowed us to know we're here, allowed us to gather together one more time in his mighty name. We're honored that you're here, those who are in our parking lot, those who may be watching us by way of social media. We pray that God might, in his miraculous way, bless your life, that this day, things said, things sung, things read, prayers prayed, might help you in your journey of life, might help you as you travel in this life. May we just share just a few announcements with you. We want to offer um, Christian sympathy to Sister Michelle Williams, who lost her son. He will be funeralized on this Wednesday at 1 o'clock here in our sanctuary. Also, we offer Christian sympathy to Mr. Wilson Simmons, who, Simmons, who lost his daughter, Queenie Thames. She'll be funeralized on Thursday at 1 o'clock at the Shaw Funeral Home. We also offer Christian sympathies to Mrs. Glenda and Johnny Smalls. John Glenda lost her brother-in-law, and Johnny lost his brother. His funeral will be later on um, next week. We also want to remind you of our mass meeting, which is going to be held this Sunday, Saturday, at 10 o'clock. The Christian um, Missionary Mass Meeting this Sunday at 10 o'clock. Also on Wednesday is our quarterly conference. This Wednesday at 7 o'clock is our quarterly conference. It will be virtual. We'll send you the um, link so you will be a part of that. Also, we want to remind you that on the 26th of this month, we'll be celebrating our church anniversary. It'll be 103 years. Warrington will be 103 years old. You'll hear a little more about it later on. Um, but just remember to save that day. And we want you all to be present with us. The last thing I'll just share with you is that we're also going to be collecting some special funds for what we call global missions. One of the things that the Amy Zion Church does is that we have churches not only in the United States, but we have churches all over the world. And this month is a special emphasis for global missions. So we'd ask you, if you would, to add something really special in your um, tithes and offering as it helps us with reaching out to the world for Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us, a day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. May God you be by in this service. May you speak to us. May you speak through us. May we hear your voice as we tend to live better lives for you. For we ask all these things in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Surely he is worthy, and Lord, we do lift you up. Thank you, thank you for sharing that with us. Please let me remind you that on Tuesday, September the 13th, there will be a meeting here at Warner Temple. It's a meeting to share and share thoughts about a contribution of a proposed African-American museum, which will be constructed near the 1898 memorial. That meeting is going to be here at Warner Temple, on Tuesday, September the 13th at 5.30, from 5.30 to 6.45. If you're interested in attending, please RSVP, call by way of the church, and let us know, and we'll put your name on the list. I'd like to share with you from the subject entitled, More Jesus and Less of Me. More Jesus and Less of Me. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from John chapter 3, verse 30. It's in our communion meditation. John chapter 3, verse 30, that says, He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. And that's read from the new... Um, the New Living Translation, I apologize. The New Living Translation. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Lord, would you speak to me? Move Clifford out of the way that the real preacher might come so that when we leave this place, we might go home. And really, and really, God, here's the challenge, really. I don't want to come here and just be the same. They want to come and drive through and drive out and just be the same. I want to change. I want to be more like you. So may the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. Oh, Lord, for you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. More Jesus and less of me. <laughs> more Jesus and less of me. This morning as we gather every first Sunday of the month, we celebrate and we commemorate the Holy Communion. It's an opportunity for us collectively to come together at the Lord's table and remember his death and his passion and his love for us. But it's also a golden opportunity for each of us to look at our own lives, for each of us to do a deep dive into our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. For each of us to look into our own lives and look deep into where we are. And I don't know about you, but the more I inspect me, the more I look at me, the more I look at my habits, my behaviors, my attitudes, my thoughts, my character, the things that I attempt to do, the more I look at me, the more I realize I need more of Jesus and less of me. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you're standing. So perhaps this morning as we prepare to take communion, perhaps this morning might be a golden opportunity for us to really look at ourselves. Not your neighbor, not the person in the car next to you, not your mate, not your children, not your people around you. Maybe this might be God, an opportunity for each of us to thoroughly examine ourselves before we take this communion. Examine our walk, examine our talk, examine where we are. For 
the thing that we find most is that as we examine ourselves and do a duck deep look, a great look at ourselves. I don't know about you, but the more I look at me, the more I realize if I'm going to impact the world for Jesus, I need more of Jesus and less of me. Mm. You see, in the text that we share with you, it's about John the Baptist. John the Baptist had, had just been about baptizing Jesus and he had baptized Jesus and at this time Jesus had started going out and now Jesus was baptizing others and so some of John's disciples came to him and said hey master um, do you realize the one that you baptized is now baptizing more there are more people going to his church <laughs> there are more people going to his stuff there are more people being baptized by him than are being baptized by you and they were all upset about it. But John, it didn't bother John. You see, because John understood his calling. John understood what God had designed him to be. John understood that he came to fulfill a purpose. That he had a divine calling on his life. And see, listen, can I just share with you? Listen, don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't get caught up with that. Understand that God has an assignment for you. An assignment for you. An assignment for you. God has a specific assignment for each of us to do. Mm. So we must complete our divine assignment. We must complete what God has called us to do. You see, it didn't bother John that Jesus had more people being baptized than him. It didn't bother him at all because John understood I came as a forerunner. I came and I know I'm not even worthy so much as to touch the shoes or tie his shoes laces. I know who I am. Know what your assignment is. Know what God has called you to do. Know who God has called you to reach out to. Are you fulfilling your assignment? Are you fulfilling the things that God wants you to do? You're not an accident. We're not just having to get here. We're not a mistake our parents made. We were placed here by a divine call from God. And God says, I've got an assignment for you. And nobody else can fulfill the assignment that God has in store for you. So as we examine ourselves, and work on filling out this assignment, I would pray, Lord, like John prayed, he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. You see, because John realized that he was happy to fulfill his assignment. He wasn't mad. He wasn't angry because others were doing stuff. He was just happy to be involved in doing his assignment. As a matter of fact, John goes on to say that, you know, it's like when you go to a wedding. He says the key person in the wedding is the groom and the bridegroom the, 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 and, and the bride. And he says that when, when I'm at this feast with Jesus, when I'm working for Jesus, I'm, I'm not the groom. I'm just the best man. I, I, it's not about me. It's about him. And I think sometimes what gets in the way of being a good witness for God is that we're so busy trying to promote self and not promote him. We're so busy bragging about our accomplishments, our trophies, our awards, our positions, our place of status, when it ought not be about us. Lord, I must decrease and allow you to increase so that I can fulfill the assignment that God has for me. You see, what I've learned 
about doing what God has for me is that what God has shown me so plainly is, Clever, you just take care of what I've placed in your hands. Mm. I didn't understand what my grandma was saying when she would always pray, Lord, help me to do what has been assigned my feeble hands to do. But the more birthdays I have, the older I get, the more experience I have in life, God reminds me, Clifford, you've got to take care of what I've placed in your hands. Listen, how are you doing with the things that God has placed in your care? How are you doing with your children and your grandchildren? Do they know Jesus? Have you had an opportunity to talk to them about the Lord? Wait, before you go out and save the world, before you go out and give money for missions and global effects, before you go out and reach everybody in Creekwood and Houston Moore and all those places, what about... The children God has placed in your hands. What about the children that live in your house? What about grandchildren? Do they know Jesus? Do they know the Lord? Have you talked to them about Jesus stuff? Have you talked to them about a relationship with the master? Have you lived a life so that they can see Jesus in you? So that they can catch a little bit of Jesus because they see him in the way you walk. They see him in the way you talk. They hear him in the way you talk. Have you handled what God has placed in your hands? Our children, the co-worker that we run across every day. You, you know, you know that guy who waits for you to show up at work? Because when you show up, they've got a lot of stuff they want to tell you. Because that's part of your assignment. And you might say, well, God, Lord, here he is again, right at my locker. Here he is again, waiting for me to, I can hardly get out of my car. I can't even get a cup of water before he runs up and says, guess what happened to me last night? Well, you got to understand that perhaps, just perhaps, he sees some Jesus in you. Perhaps he needs to speak to you because you are the representative of God that God has placed in the world for him. It's not an accident that he bumps into you every day. It's not an accident that he looks for you. It's a divine calling. Mm. And so we've got to fulfill the assignment that God has placed on us. You probably heard me say it more than one time, but we've got to let our light so shine so that men might see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Oh, but I heard it translated another way, and it bothers me almost every time I say it. But it just gets to my skin. It gets in my, my belly and my heart. It says that so that those who know you but don't know him would want to know him because they ran into you, because they work with you, because they lived in your house, because you were their grandmother, because you were their grandfather, because you were their pastor, because you were their teacher, because you were their neighbor. Hey, that they might want to know him because they bumped into you. Mitch Marlowe, a pastor, writes, wrote a book called Prayer. And he emphasized this passage of scripture, John 3, verse 30, where he says, he must increase and I must decrease. And he said, but how? How, how, how does one do that? How does one allow God to get greater and greater and yet allow yourself to become lesser and lesser? He says you do it in like five simple ways. He says, number one, you got to understand who Jesus is. You got to recognize that he is Lord. He's the Lord of our lives. You got to recognize that he is the God of all creation. We recognize that he is Lord. In the Bible, Lord is written about 3,322 times. 
yet we find that he is the Lord of our lives. Lord means I surrender to him. Lord means I give him first place in my life. He says, secondly, you've got to forgive as he has forgiven you. Forgive as he has forgiven you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13 says it like this. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Then also in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 31 and 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, and forgiving one another, just as God, through Jesus Christ, has forgiven you. Then he says, one way to make sure that he increases and we decrease is you've got to love as he loved us. And you know what John 15, 12 says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. This is my command, love each other in the same way I have loved you. Then he says, also, we've got to study the word. Be students of the Bible. The Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. 2 Timothy 2, 15 says, work hard so you can prevent yourself, you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and one who correctly explains the word of truth. In other words, King James says, study to show thyself approved. A workman under God who need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth. And then lastly, he says, if you want God to be greater in your life and you to be lesser, he says, remember, he says, understand who Jesus is, forgive as you are forgiven, love as you are loved, but also be a student of the word. And then lastly, he says, but you've got to live a life of prayer. Oh, I can't argue with that. Just keep on praying because the Lord is nigh. Just keep on praying and he'll hear you cry for the Lord has promised and his words are true. Just keep on praying and he'll answer you. You see, here's what I've learned. I've, I've learned with an old song in South Carolina. We used to say, whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer at noon. Whisper a prayer in the evening. It'll keep your hearts in tune. God answers prayer in the morning. And God answers prayer at noon. God will answer prayer in the evening. Just keep your hearts in tune. So how do I allow him to get greater and greater and greater? And yet, place myself in a position to be lesser and lesser. How do I do that? Well, you do it through prayer, and I, you do it through communicating with God. And I remember watching a clip of The Family Feud with, um, and The Family Feud, you know, the guy on Family Feud, and he was Steve Harvey. He was talking to this young lady, and it was her turn to give an answer to some questions. And she was actually going to be doing that, you know, 30 seconds answer these questions, blah, blah, blah. And so just before she did it, she said, Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. She was like, calling on God to, to show up. Well, listen, here's what I've learned. I've learned that when I find myself in a situation where it seems like it's more of me and less of him. I say, Lord Jesus, activate. When I find myself having words come out of my mouth that are more of me and less of him, I say, Lord Jesus, activate. When I find myself wanting to make choices, choices that are more about me and
and less about him. I pray to God, Lord Jesus, activate. Here's what I want to give you as an assignment. When you go through life this day, when you find yourself in a situation where you think it's being more of you and less of him, stop right where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, you be greater. Lord Jesus, you grow in me. Lord Jesus, speak through my mind, speak through my heart, speak through my ears, my eyes, my legs, my head. Lord Jesus, you increase and help me to decrease. And I declare unto you that he'll show up. Can I get a witness in the house? He will show up. He will show up. And he will prove himself to be the God that he said he is. Can you give God some praise in the house? I don't know where you are. But just before we prepare to take the communion, let me remind you that if you don't have a right relationship with God, if by chance you hear this message and God is knocking on your heart, the Bible says all you have to do is open your heart and allow him to come in and I'll stay with you. So we offer that invitation to you right now. Those who are here in this parking lot, those who may be listening to us by way of social media, even if you're going to listen to me, maybe not today, but maybe through YouTube sometime this week. And maybe you're thinking, well, I, I don't need to call the church. I don't need to send a message because nobody's going to get it. I dare you call them. Call us, and we'll walk you through this invitation. We'll let you know that God loves you and that God has an assignment mm, for you. I don't care what people have said. I don't care where you are. I don't care how life looks right now. I don't care where, you, where you're positioned right now. God has a divine assignment for you. That's why we're still breathing. Because God says, I've got some work I need you to do for me. So if you're going to give your life to him, just let us know. If you want to become a part of this ministry, Come a part of this church. Just let us know. Send us a note. If you're here in the parking lot, come on out. We'll love to welcome you. And then if you have any special prayer requests, put them in the chat. Those who are here, raise your hand, and we'll lift that up to God for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for reminding us this communion morning, morning that we've got to decrease and allow you to increase. God, grow in us. God, become more in our lives as we fulfill the assignments that you have for us to fulfill. And when you do, God, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. Bless those who are doing the bound to pray for, those who are bereaved among us, those who are sick, those who are maybe taking the world on by storm. Have your way. For it's in the mighty, matchless, and marvelous name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. As the choir sings, those of you who have not received your communion, if you'll meet me here at this table, I'll give you your communion. We'll prepare to receive it. Those who did not get it when you came in, would you come and meet me here? Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Oh, how I love. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Yes. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is a sweet. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Oh, how I love. Oh, how I love the name.
name Jesus. Come on, y'all. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It is. It is the sweetest name. I know. I know. Lift your voice and say, oh. Oh. receive the Holy Communion, you'll hear this invitation, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort, devoutly kneel, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. How many people in your car? How many people in your car? One more? Let's pray together our prayer of general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and weaknesses, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever after, here ever after, serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercies has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee. Have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The call act, let's do it together. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secret is hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercies did give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and then instituted in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us. O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these, thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, we partake of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night when he was betrayed, he took 
bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. He said, This is my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of your sins. Drink ye all of this, that it might preserve you and keep you until I come back for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. I take the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and as a priest I eat it first because it reminds us, especially me, that all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So I eat it now. Then I take the cup which represents his blood, and I drink it for my sins. But not only did he die for my sins, but not for my sins alone, but the sins of the entire world. I take it with faith and with thanksgiving. Let's pray. It's very meet and right in our bounding duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify the glorious name, evermore praising thee, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and Now you have in your hand the symbols that represents what Jesus did that night as he prepared the Last Supper. Would you now open up the side that shows the, the bread? It represents his body, which was broken for you and for me. The body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given that it might preserve you, your life and your body, until he returns. Take it now and eat it. Being on him with your heart, in your heart with faith and with thanksgiving. As you flip the chalice over, you now see the wine symbolizing his blood, which was flowed freely now in Calvary for your sins and mine. Would you open it now? And drink it as an act of faith that it might preserve you and keep you until he comes back for you, and we do this with thanksgiving. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive those who are our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we humbly beseech thy servant's desire, thy fatherly heavenly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits of the death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and through faith in his blood, we and the whole church may obtain the remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. I'm going to be seeking thee that all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounding duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Glory be to God on high and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. 
We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that taketh away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that taketh away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sit at the right hand of the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son, we sing. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for the privilege to take this communion, because surely it reminds us of the love that you have for us and our love for you. May we live lives that put a smile on your face. And now unto him who's able. He's able to keep you from falling and able to present you faultless before his presence. Yes. To the only wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, yes, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. I hope the kids had a great um, first week of school. We are going to continue to pray for you. Um, those students who are seniors in high school, make sure you give me your name and the school that you're attending. Because I want to take an opportunity to visit all of the schools, um, parents. So give me the student's name and what school they're attending. And I'll go by and just, if no more, just wave at them and make sure that they're keeping up with what they're going to do. Lastly, if, if your kids are involved in anything, if you'll send that information to the church, we'd like to pass it out. So that as a church family, we can come by and watch them in a basketball game, a football game, a academic event. We can watch them, uh, whatever they're doing, we want to lift them up. We want to support them. So that's our desire. So if you give us that information, we'd love to follow your children and to help them to stay on the right track. May God continue to bless you. Remember the bereaved families that we've mentioned earlier. Um, Mrs. Michelle Williams, the son, will be funeralized here at 1 o'clock on Wednesday. Mrs. Mrs. Queenie things will be funeralized on Thursday at 1 o'clock at the Shaw Funeral Home. Also, please remember Mr. John, Johnny, um, Johnny, Mr. Johnny is in the hospital. Um, he's in intensive care, but we're going to lift him up. Continue to pray for Mrs. James, who's at home, and all the others, Miss Janie, and all those others who may be sick among us. God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. May you have an awesome Labor Day tomorrow, and may you be safe. God bless you.